Hello everyone, I'm Kyung Park from KAIS. Today, I will talk about our work, which is automatic SSD, full hardware automation over new memory for high performance and energy efficient PCIe storage card. Here is my short biography. I received the BS degree in computer science from Korea University and the MS degree in computer science from Georgia Institute of Technology. I worked as a researcher at LG Electronics and Yonsei University. Now I'm a PhD candidate at KAIST. My advisor is Myung-Soo Jung, who leads computer architecture and memory system laboratory. Before I move on to the main talk, let me summarize our works in a single slide. As major memory vendor makes flash denser rather than faster, speed gap between processor and SSD still exists. Therefore, industry tries to apply new memory to build a fast PCIe storage card. We can apply traditional NVMe storage architecture to build a new memory PCIe storage card by employing multiple processors and GM resources. Although this approach may achieve a good performance, it reveals another problems, which are power and thermal issue. We propose automatic SSD that removes the internal processor and DRAM buffer from NVMe architectures by automating request management and data transfers over hardware. As a solid state drives because major storage media, NAND flash technology has been greatly developed for decades. Bit presentation per single cell has increased from SLC to QLC, which is four times denser than SLC. In addition, 4D NAND flash technology stacks 128 layers in a vertical manner to make flash memory denser. But as the storage capacity increases, their latency gets longer. Therefore, in memory hierarchy, there still exists large speed gap between main memory and SSD storage system. While the main memory takes several nanoseconds for operations, the SSD takes several hundred microseconds and milliseconds. As the flash memory gets denser, but it shows long latency, enterprise and data center industry applies new memory to build a fast PCIe storage card. They use a storage card as a storage cache or memory extension. For example, Facebook and NetApp intend to have a hierarchical storage system, putting fast PCI storage card to the process side. If so, to build the PCI storage card, we have to consider how to design the architecture of a storage card. Here is a typical architecture for modern SSD. Conventional SSD includes multiple embedded cores. It also includes internal DRAM, which buffer data between a host and the storage backend. And SSD includes tens of storage media or multiple channel in order to increase the storage capacity and improve parallelism. Another important part of SSD is the firmware. Host interface layer implements NVMe protocol and handles NVMe requests and DRAM buffering. Address translation layer translates host side logical block address to a storage size memory address. Hardware F-section layer manages memory transactions. Here is a question. If we adopt a typical SSD architecture to build a new memory PCI storage card, the performance probably meets our expectations. But is this the best approach? We believe this is not the best approach. Next, we consider several challenges for a new memory PCIe storage card. Here is a latency breakdown of our firmware-based storage card. We use our customized platform because there is no publicly available platform that we can analyze the internal latency for a new memory. The firmware latency on the IO data path accounts for 98% of the total IO service time at the device level. It means that the firmware latency is hard to overlap with IO birth PRAM latency. 
the former latency cannot be hidden behind the fast new memory. Though we can have more powerful processor to reduce the firmware latency, it can occur power consumption issue. The figure shows that Intel Optane SSD, which is a PRAM based PCIe storage card, consumes four to six times power than middle end flash based SSD. Another challenge of firmware based approach is high operating temperature. Figures show changes of the temperature according to operation time. In this measure, we use firmware-based commercial SSD. The temperature of the SSD's processor reaches around 90 degrees Celsius in five minutes, and then it becomes higher than 100 degrees Celsius after 20 minutes. In addition, such high temperature is propagated from the processor to the storage backend. It makes the device unstable and degrades the system reliability. To address these challenges, we propose automatic SSD. The insight of this work is that new memory like PRAM does not require complicated operations such as block allocations and garbage collections because PRAM is byte addressable and overrides a storage cell without erasing operation. Automatic SSD removes the embedded processor and DRAM buffer, and it replaces firmware components with hardware module. Host interface layer is replaced by three hardware modules, which are singleton, fetcher, and terminator. Singleton module maintains NVMe context registers. Fetcher module fetches SQL entry from host side memory and converts it into internal commands. Terminator module informs the host for the IO completion by generating CQ entry. Address translation layer is replaced by direct IO module, which translates addresses and transfers data. Hardware abstraction layer is replaced by pure memory controller and pure module, which makes the storage backend. Now, I will show a request handling flow in right case. A host rings SQ doorbell. This informs the device of an IO request in NVMe protocol. Fetcher gets SQ entry and parses it. And then Fetcher signals direct IO to handle the request. Direct IO reads the requested data from host side memory. And then it writes the data to period modules by striping style. After finishing of writing data, Direct IO informs Terminator of IO completion. Terminator sends an interrupt for a host to process remaining works. Next, I will describe more details of Direct IO module, which is the core of automatic SSD. Before we move on to the details of Direct IO, let's consider how to implement the general data transfer mechanism. The goal of direct IO is to transfer data between the host side memory and PRM storage backend efficiently. Oxybus has write and read channels, which is a memory interface used in most hardware design. However, an Oxy channel should be matched with same Oxy channel on the other side, it cannot be matched with the opposite channel. Therefore, inside DMA engine, we need additional logic to forward data to the other side. Also, one DMA engine should handle both read and write requests and requests are serialized. It is in inefficient. Therefore, direct IO connects opposite oxy channels directly. The idea is simple. First, we separate the DMA engine into read engine and write engine. And then we split Axi bus and assign one channel to each engine separately. Finally, in each engine, directly connect opposite Axi channels using Axi stream interface, which is unidirection Axi bus. Direct IO does not need additional logic to forward the data, and both read and write requests can be processed simultaneously. Now, I will show data strapping method used in automatic SSD. One storage block size is four kilobytes and a single block splits into eight chunks 
by 500 trail wide. Storage backend consists of multiple PRM channels and each channel is accessed by 500 trail wide unit. When a single block write comes, eight chunks are striped in multiple PRM channels in parallel. In read case, the process is same with the write case. Only a data direction is opposite. One of the important parts of SSD's firmware is rail leveling. If SSD has no wear leveling, continuous programs on the same location makes the block wear out. But we have many blocks not programmed yet. This degrades the efficiency of block utilization in SSD. If SSD has a wear leveling feature, programs are distributed evenly on different blocks, which increases the efficiency of block utilization. However, this feature have to include a complex software and hardware resources. So in automatic SSD, we apply a simple rail leveling algorithm inspired by start gap rail leveling. For example, we have eight blocks and empty block. There are two register start and gap. Start points to an initial block and a gap points to an empty block. Continuous memory writes are coming until the number of memory writings reaches some threshold. When the number of memory writings reaches some threshold, gap is moved by one location, copying the contents of a neighbor block. At every threshold, the empty block moves and neighbor blocks are shifted. By this mechanism, the address of blocks are changed and continuous programs on the same block can be avoided. Although this method is not as powerful as a well leveling in conventional SSD, it is acceptable because PRM's endurance is much better than NAND flash. Address translation is a simple algebraic calculation. For example, we access the logical address three and gap is five then the physical address is three. When we access the logical address five and gap is five, the physical address is six, which is five plus one. By this simple calculation, we can implement the address translation and wear leveling without a complex software and hardware resources. We also implemented PRAM memory controller to employ PRAM as our source backend. I will briefly explain the implementation. Scheduling module separates read and write requests. Buffer managers get data from the write buffer and programs data to PRM module. MVDDL translator converts IO request to PRM MVDDL operation command. DDL timing generator generates DDL commands based on DDL specification. This figure shows a flow plan view of our prototype. You can see main hardware modules and six pure memory controllers. We prototyped automatic SSD on a Vertex 7 FPGA custom board. Resource utilization is under 30% and we still have enough room to employ other hardware resources. Our test bed has three gigahertz CPU and 32 gigabyte memory. Storage card uses a Vertex 7 FPGA and PCIe Gen 3 8 lanes and 6 PRAM modules. We compare automatic SSD and firmware SSD. Both prototypes have same operating frequency and PRAM backend storage. The difference is hardware and firmware execution. In microbench test, we use FIO benchmark tool with 10 threads. We selected real workloads from SNIA traces and we measure the temperature using thermal imaging camera. This figure shows bandwidth and latency normalized to firmware SSD. Automatic SSD shows at least 25 times better performance than firmware SSD in read bandwidth. As the size of request increases, the performance gets higher and is saturated 16 kilobytes. In write bandwidth, Automatic SSD shows at most 25 times better performance than firmware SSD. 
The bandwidth of sequential access is better than random access because data from multiple threads can be aggregated in sequential access. Due to PRAM's slow write latency, the benefit is not as high as read. In latency analysis, automatic SSD reduces the latency of former SSD by 98% and 96% as we expect from bandwidth analysis. Let's look at request series analysis for energy efficiency. We can see a clear efficiency gap between automatic SSD and firmware SSD. This figure shows SNIA workload performance normalized to firmware SSD. The bandwidth of automatic SSD is eight times better than firmware SSD average. Also, the latency is reduced by 80% compared to firmware SSD. Specifically, in read dominant workload, it shows 19 times better bandwidth and 95% lower latency. In CDF of web user and edge server workload, most IO responses of automatic SSD are received in 100 microseconds whereas firmware SSD has no response until 600 microseconds. We measure the operating temperature for about one hour. Point one is FPGA chip where automatic SSD is implemented. Point two and three are related to PRAM storage backend. We can see the temperature variation of automatic SSD is sustainable at each point. Today, we introduce automatic SSD. Firmware approach for new memory storage card needs more computation resources, such as high frequency processor and DRAM buffer, which introduces power consumption and thermal issue. Automatic SSD removes the internal processors and firmware execution by automating the request management and data transfers over hardware. Automatic SSD achieves lower operating power and better performance than firmware SSD. Also, it shows the sustainable operating temperature for a long time execution. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.